Hi, and welcome to Run Tall with Tim. I'm Tim. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate the time that you and I get to spend together, so thanks for tuning in. And I hope wherever you are that you're happy, healthy, and staying safe. On today's video, I'm going to be taking a real close look at the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. This town's so lame. I'm feeling so wired. It's 4 a.m. I'm not even tired. We're in your car. Now, these are the original version of the Alpha Fly and not the Alpha Fly 2 that was just released, although I will be bringing you that review as well here shortly. I've ordered a pair, but they haven't shipped yet, but they should be shipping out fairly soon. And the reason I thought it would be a good idea for us to revisit the Alpha Fly, even though it's been out for a couple of years, is right now they're affordable. And I think, like, like myself, a lot of runners passed on them because of the price tag. Now here in the US, they retail for 275 US dollars, but because of the release of the Alpha Fly 2, you can find them on sale at about a 25% discount at most places. So I picked up a pair for about 204 dollars. But before I get into it too far, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes I'm about to review for you. So let's do that. But then when we come back together, we're going to take a real close look at the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. Let's start and we'll talk about some of the basic stats of the shoe, beginning with the weight. Now they came in at 7.3 ounces for US men's size nine and my scales or 205 grams. The stack height is huge. So they have a 40 millimeter stack height of that Zoom X foam that's in the heel and then 36 up in the forefoot. So they have a four millimeter offset and then they have all kinds of tech going on in this midsole. Within the midsole itself is embedded a carbon fiber plate that runs the full length of the shoe. Now, what's really interesting about the carbon fiber plate, and I, I didn't know this about the shoe until just recently when I was doing a little bit more research to share with you here today, is Nike tuned each of the carbon fiber plates to match the size of the shoe because obviously, you know, someone that has a smaller foot is, is likely to be a smaller runner. And so that plate's not going to be need to be as thick to give them the same bounce or energy return as maybe a runner with a little bit more mass who has a bigger foot. So the smaller the shoe size, the thinner that carbon fiber plate, the larger shoe size, the thicker it is. Also, in, as far as some of the tech in the shoe are these two big air pods that they have up here in the forefoot. So they just have a ton of stuff going on, but I think it all works really well together. So let's just jump right in and we'll talk about the ride of the midsole and then we'll move on to the upper and we'll talk about some of the cushioning and all those kinds of good things and what it's like to run in them. Now, I don't want to overstate my experience in the Alpha Fly because they are brand new to me, but I am seriously looking at these as my next marathon uh, race shoe. And that's because I have been running in the Nike Next Percent too. And I really love those shoes. They did a really good job. They're fast shoe. They were comfortable. And so you might be asking yourself, well, why are you changing? And if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, there are a couple of things that I'm looking for. Number one is pace or maintaining my pace. So one of the things that I struggled with a little bit in the next percent too, was uh, getting and locking in my pace. It felt like I had to really kind of work at it. It has a much more aggressive carbon fiber plate that makes you want to go fast or pop you forward. But to get in and lock in a steady pace, I found it just a little bit difficult. You know, it wanted to either make me go a little faster than I wanted to go to, or if I was falling back and more solidly midfoot striking or even coming back on my heel a little bit, it really wanted to slow me down. So I'm looking for a shoe that might potentially lock in that pace for the entire 26.2 miles. The other issue that I had, and this was really the only major issue or concern that I had with running in the next percent too, is after the marathon, after Bayshore, and I talked about this a little bit when I did a race recap, is that my calves were killing me and I never experienced that kind of muscle soreness before ever. <laughs> And so over the years, I've never had that kind of calf pain after running a race. So I'm hoping that I can find a shoe that maybe I won't have that kind of issue. So it was nearly two weeks. The first week, I, I could barely walk. I barely get up and down my stairs 
that's how bad my muscles hurt in my calves. And I wasn't expecting that at all. So it took two weeks before I could start to run again. So I'm hoping to find a shoe won't give me that muscle soreness and where I can lock in the pace. So let's talk about the Alpha Fly and my experience in them so far. So the two workouts that I've completed in the Alpha Fly, the one was a recovery run, which is just a little over five miles. And that was around town here. So I was out on the uh, paved roads and some sidewalks, that kind of thing. And then the other one was a long run that I did at my local high school track. So it was about just a little short of two hours, hour and 55 minutes. So a little over 12 miles for me. And I have to say that my experience in running down at the track, and that's really the one that I was keying in on because that's closer to what a marathon is going to be like when you spend hours in a pair of running shoes. It's really positive. I found it really easy, much easier for me to dial in my pace and maintain that pace in the Alpha Fly than I did with the next percent too. So I was really happy about that. And then the other piece that surprised me was just how fresh my legs felt after the workout. My legs weren't tired at all and I had absolutely no calf muscle soreness. Now I can't say that about the next percent too. So even in the next percent too, when I was running, you know, the long run, maybe take them out for a 12 mile workout. And I didn't do that often because super shoes like these, both of these, you only get about a hundred miles in them for racing anyway, uh, before you have to kind of move them to that workout, um, you know, workout spot or slot in your rotation because you know, at that point, you need to get a fresh pair of running, a fresh pair of super shoes if you want to get the most out of them for your marathon or your half marathon or even a 5K for that matter. Because I know that some runners are using these at all of the different uh, race levels or distances. So that's really nice to know, too, because I think it's a very versatile shoe for a lot of runners that, yes, it's a lot of money. But even if you got 100 miles out of these shoes before it started to break down, if you're a 5K racer, that's a lot of 5K races that you can run in these. So from that respect, it might be worth the money to invest in them. As a marathoner, you might get maybe a couple marathons out of them before you might want to update or upgrade to the next level or get a fresh pair. So for me, I found these to be really enjoyable to run in. They're really comfortable in the midsole. There's a lot of pop or energy return coming off of those um, AirPods. So that's that was the thing that struck me the most is in striking the ground, the way that these shoes are designed is it was encouraging me to really strike the ground on my really solidly, at least on my midfoot, if not slightly onto my forefoot. But it was easy to stay there. So I was just kind of popping right off the ground. And it was just so much fun and so enjoyable to run in these. I found them much more enjoyable than the next percent too. And that's just personal preference at this point after just doing 12 miles. Now I am going to take these out because I'm entering into week four as I prepare for the Detroit uh, a marathon event in October. So I'm going to run in these tomorrow. I'm going to take these out for some speed work. So tomorrow I'm going to be doing some intervals. Um, and again, I'm going to take them down at the track to do that. So I'll get a better sense of what these are going to be like on fast paced days, because so far recovery run and long run are, I did not pick up the speed for any real amount of time. Yes, I did step on the gas when I was out at the track, even for that long run, just to kind of get a feel for these and see how they do. Plus there was another runner that joined me about an hour into my workout and they were using me a little bit as a rabbit. So every now and then I would kind of surprise them a little bit. So I was running at a really steady pace. And when I would come up on the runner, they were doing a walk run and they were using me as a guide. So as soon as I hit them again or caught up to them on the track as I was getting ready to pass them, they would step on the gas and stick with me for about a quarter way around the track. So a couple of vacations, I just, I hit the throttle. I just hit the gas and went. So I did get a sense that you can really easily pick up the pace, but I didn't do it intentionally for very long. So tomorrow is going to be a really good test. So you guys, if you want to join me on Strava, I'll put a link to my, Stro uh, to my Strava profile in the description below, and you can check out how the intervals turn out for me tomorrow because that all that data is uploaded pretty much instantaneously right after I completed the workout. So let's flip these over and we'll take a look at the outsole. See how they're protecting all of the tech we just talked about, including that Zoom X foam, the AirPods, that carbon fiber plate, all that good stuff. Back in the heel area, you see that they have two strips of outsole rubber here to protect the Zoom X foam. Then up in the forefoot, they have a pretty good amount of outsole rubber, basically from the midfoot all the way through to your toe off. But there's a lot of stuff in here that they need to protect, including those AirPods as well as a Zoom X foam. And you can see that carbon fiber plate uh, behind or underneath there of the also rubber and that Zoom X foam. 
I think they did a good job. I think they have just about the right amount there to help protect all of that stuff from wearing down prematurely or to protect those AirPods, for example, from popping. I have heard stories of that happening on occasion, but I think they got it just about right. And if you've been running in the Alpha Fly and you have a lot more miles on them, you know, share, share your experience in them in the comment section below. Let us know how yours are holding up, how many miles you got on them, and how well they're doing for race day for you. So let's take a look at the upper. Now here they're using AtomNet. Now this is an updated version of the FlyNet. Basically they had steamed it and stretched it, got it much more breathable, took a lot less material so that reduces the weight. Now these are a little heavier obviously than the next percent, next percent too. And I think this was their attempt at trying to find ways to shave the weight to accommodate all of the tech that we just talked about. Highly breathable, I found it to be really comfortable. The one note that I would say is that while I was running on both, even that uh, recovery run as well as that long run, my big toe seemed like it was touching that material a bit, especially you know when I was uh, striking the ground, it seemed to kind of pull that material then in or collapse on my big toe so I could feel it. That wasn't really uncomfortable, but it was definitely noticeable for me. And I'm hoping that when I get the flying or the Alpha Fly 2s, uh, that maybe they've addressed that issue a little bit, but we'll see here. And a week or so and then as we take a look around the shoe as you can see it's transparent you can see right through it so tons and tons of airflow very comfortable that way not really anything else going on back around here now this has a different type of a lace enclosure system because there's really no lace enclosure system it's all one piece this, this is really a booty construction built with laces to be able to cinch it up they have a little bit of padding where the traditional tongue would be to help keep those laces from cutting the cross top of your foot. But I had no issues with that at all. In fact, they fit really comfortably. Just a little bit of bunching in this particular shoe right here at the start of where the traditional eyelet chain would be, but absolutely no concerns or worries for me at all. The only downside to this type of a, a system here or this type of construction of the upper it's kind of hard putting the shoes on but once i got them on they fit perfectly so i, I guess i'm okay with taking just a couple of extra seconds to be able to get my sh uh, foot into into the uh, shoes if the trade-off is having a really comfortable ride so i'm okay with that just know that it might take a little bit of tugging here or there to just slip them on your feet now the amount of padding around the heel collar and tab is very minimal it's this bumper style of padding so it just rests in the areas where you're really going to need it but i had no issues at all in these and either that recovery run or in that you know a couple hours i spent them around the track not a lot in terms of structure back and heel but but a little and i i didn't have any issues you know i didn't have no issue i didn't have any issues at all with my, my heel slipping side to side or up or down it felt really comfortable that way so overall, I'm really liking the Alpha Fly. I'm looking forward to the Alpha Fly too. I should have those on my feet here shortly. And then once I have a few miles in those, we can talk about that, and then I can feel comfortable enough to do a little bit of a comparison. But right now, it's really looking good that these are going to be what I'm going to be wearing, either this version or maybe version two, uh, at least into Detroit coming in October. So, hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim. This town's so lame, I'm feeling so